In our headlines on this Tuesday afternoon, March 19th, here in South Korea. The standoff between government authorities and medical practitioners is headed for court as two senior doctors become the first pair to face license suspension for their support of the nationwide walkout by junior doctors. Meanwhile, on the trade front, auto exports surged past 5 billion US dollars in February as well. And despite noting an on-year decline, government officials remain optimistic. We tell you why. On the international front, speaking over the phone with his Israeli counterpart on Monday, US President Joe Biden urged for a sustainable counter-offensive against Hamas, one that does not aggravate the sufferings of civilians in Gaza. Two senior doctors have become the first to face license suspension in connection to the walkout by junior doctors from hospitals across the nation. They vowed to take their case to court and their junior counterparts have pledged to do the same. Our Pak Konu has the latest. The health ministry sent on Monday the first notifications of license suspension to two senior doctors. Those doctors, Pang myung -ha and Kim tae who are both leaders of an emergency committee at the Korea Medical Association, were given final suspension notices of three months, running from April 15 to July 14. The ministry said Pak and Kim were given the suspensions as they have been supporting the walkout of junior doctors. Pak says the walkout was a result of voluntary action by trainee doctors individually and that he will take legal action. Trainee doctors are also preparing to take legal action as they will also start receiving suspension notices from next Monday. Over 2,000 male medical school students who have been on a leave of absence as a protest against plans for expanding the medical school admission quota have, according to a recent survey, shown willingness to join the military as a regular enlisted soldier rather than as a medical officer or public health doctor. The survey was conducted by the Korea Association of Medical Colleges with around 5,000 students responding. Around 400 of those students were reported to already have applied for enlistment, which is in contrast to only 200 medical school students enlisted as a serving soldier two years ago. And medical school professors from universities including Seoul National University and Yonsei University are set to submit their resignations next Monday. But during a daily briefing on Tuesday, the health ministry asked the professors to persuade junior doctors to return to work. That is the right thing to do as a doctor and a professor, to make them return to the medical field instead of doing the wrong thing and following the students who irresponsibly left their patients. The official added that the government is widely open for dialogue to listen to their voices and making policies based on their opinions. Also at the briefing, the government announced additional support of around 2 trillion won, or roughly 1.5 billion U.S. dollars for the medical field. It added more support will be given to medical teams when deployed in emergency treatment and surgeries that require harder work. Park Geun-hye, Arirang News. Also, in related news, President Yoon Seok-yeol is poised to set up a special committee on medical reform. Addressing a cabinet meeting earlier on this Tuesday morning, he said the committee will launch in April amid plans for structural improvements to the current healthcare delivery system. He added hopes for constructive discussions rather than conflict involving medical practitioners and related pundits. Seoul is currently hosting the third Summit for Democracy, which comes to a close with a virtual leaders meeting on Wednesday evening Korea Standard Time. Now, in light of this occasion, a pair of American pundits have taken time to commend the country's democratic advances, asserting that South Korea can play a leading role in restoring global faith in democracy. This outlook was shared in a written piece for foreign policy by Damon Wilson and Lin, uh, Lin Lee, that is, who both work for the U.S.-based National Endowment for Democracy. We interrupt our regular afternoon newscast now to bring you live coverage of President Yoon seok yeols opening remarks at the 21st policy briefing open to the public taking place here in capital Seoul, where his poise to seek a new miracle on the Han River with plans to ensure affordable and quality residential life throughout the capital city as well as public spaces for art and culture.
먼저 국민 의례를 하겠습니다. First, 정면 왼편에 있는 국기에 대하여 Salute to the flag. Please be seated. We will now begin our People's Livelihood Debate and Discussion Session. Despite your busy schedule, we welcome you to Yongdeungpo. We will now begin the discussion, and the President will deliver his opening remarks. Hello, everyone. It's very nice to see you. I've been going around the country to meet with the people and discuss the policies for that region. And we have been resolving the issues swiftly. Different ministries, even though they work their best, if they look into the livelihood issues in silos, it takes a long time. And therefore, the time to resolve such an issue would take long, and that is why it is hard for the people to feel the actual changes, and that is why we have decided to hold such discussion sessions myself as a president with the people, and taking this opportunity, we are able to listen to different opinions of many different people, and with that discussion, we hold meetings with different ministries and have follow-up meetings to resolve such issues, and through this, we have changed the way of Civ uh, civil servants who are working and uh, our presidential office staff, we uh, are even working on the weekends. And I think it is an efficient way to, and it's really worthy to do this because we can really resolve the issues. We are joined by the mayor of Seoul Metropolitan City, and we have the Minister of Culture and Sports and Tourism. And we're all here, and we're all years actually, to listen to your opinions, valued opinions. This is the 21st discussion session, and we are gathered here under the theme of a new miracle on the Han River created through urban innovation. The capital city, Seoul, we are going to look at Seoul from the perspective of the people who are really living here, and we would like to solve the issues that you are facing. The great leap that we have experienced and achieved is frequently dubbed as the miracle on the Han River, and Seoul has played played a great leading role in this achievement. And in particular, Yongdeungpo, where we are at today, and Kuro are the key regions that led the miracle on the Han River. Yongdeungpo, in 1899 and 1905, we have uh, laid the railway and transportation network and has played an important pivotal role in terms of transportation and infrastructure, and especially with the five-year economic development plan of the Republic of Korea, Yongdeungpo and Kuro had been serving as the forward base for the export industry. 
And in 1977, when we have achieved a great mark of export, these two areas uh, contributed to 110 million Korean won. So as such, it had played a great role. However, it is facing difficulties at the moment. And changes in urban space functions uh, have led to such deterioration of these areas, and it has led to the aging of the original city center. This is not only a concern for Yeongdeungpo, but for Seoul as a whole. At the moment, the residential area of Seoul, about 42% is a residential area that are non-apartment areas, and amongst this, about 87% is a, an area where it is difficult to renovate. The Economist ranked Seoul Tokyo, Seoul was ranking fourth on the great places to live around the si around the world, and it is also ranked on the 60th. Uh, rank as a good place to live. However, there is an imbalance in terms of the quality of living, and therefore we have to resolve this issue, the imbalance issue, so that everywhere in Seoul is a good place to live. In particular, innovating the original downtown areas as, as Yeongdeungpo quickly is very important. So Yeongdeungpo, we are today, we're going to talk about how to renovate Yeongdeungpo as swift as possible. And we are going to vigorously take this initiative ahead. The government the urban regeneration and cost, uh, cutting cost of the of living. Through this, we are going to innovatively change the capital city Seoul and will make Seoul a great place to live around the world, to live up to its expectations. And we are going to innovatively change Seoul and in particular the uh, Urban regeneration project will be changed fundamentally and so that uh, by reorganizing the residential areas, uh, these people living in non-apartment areas, their quality of living would go up as well. The urban regeneration projects that were taking place until now, like uh, making murals, would, were these really the items that are making these places a livable place for the people? We are now going to take steps that are actually helping the residents. The New Village Project, abbreviated as Newville Project, will largely renovate Seoul's original downtown. This project will be the eligible areas would be areas where there are about 50 to 100 households, non-apartment households, and the government will provide low interest lo low interest loans to for them to be used as maintenance funds, and we are going to support the cost, financial cost, of installing community areas such as parking lots and CCTVs and sports facilities. Until now, you had to have a, a certain quantity to be eligible for this project. However, from now on, even though you are a small number of households, you will be able to uh, have this benefit. So a pilot project contest will be held in the second half of this year, and the project will begin earnest next year. And also, by efficiently reorganizing the existing budget, we will not have additional financial burden, but still be able to invest 10 trillion won over the next 10 years. And in order to revitalize the livelihood, the housing cost should be reduced. First and foremost, 
the government will correct for sure the wrong punitive taxation practices, and this will continue. The previous government had uh, failed in their real estate policies, and for them to amend this, they wanted to, uh, they had exercised the real estate declared price uh, realization project, which had immense side effects and had even more burden on the public. For a total of 63% raise in this real estate declared price happened and as a result people had to bear more burden and paying twice as much in real estate taxes so the landlords had to pay uh, their taxes to the government, to the state, and the tenants had to pay the landlords. And also this declared price, real estate price, is related to 67 different kinds of taxes. So the property tax, if the real estate declared price increases as by 90%, this means that you have to pay 61% more of property tax. So, if you, ha if you own a real estate worth of 400 million, then you are not eligible to the scholarship of the national scholarship because the real estate value, declared value, goes up in a wrong way. So such wrong policies are not only playing a, a role as a burden on the public, but also there is actually harm, doing harm to the people. And ever since my government took the office, we have restored this to 20, to 2021 level. However, this is uh, legislated, so that is why there is a limit for us to revamp it totally. So this declared price or listing price of real estate will have be completely abolished. It'll be great if we can revise the law, but even before the revision of a law, we are going to exercise different policy methods so that it has a, an uh, actual effect as abolishment, distorting the market and burdening the people of such wrong policies will be corrected. And in Yeongdeungpo, if you have a 30-pyeong uh, apartment in 2021, uh, the total holding tax was about 5.5 million. However, this came down to 3.2 million Korean won. And the tenants who are living in their houses or apartments, their tax burdens are also increasing, and therefore the public sector will do our utmost to solve this issue.
The public will purchase 100,000 newly built small and medium-sized houses over the next two years and supply them at low rents to the vulnerable. So uh, the 100,000 apartment units is a little bit more than the total area of Bundang. And this will be Seventy-five thousand households will be provided at a seven, around seventy percent of the uh, market price. And also, we are going to ease the burden of housing costs on the youth and working class. And we are also going to. Uh, they uh, exercise the corporate long-term rental housing and expand funding and tax support to help the private sector play a better role. And also, the government will expand the scope and duration of the youth monthly rent support project and expand the number of people who are eligible for it and the housing benefits and also the housing benefits will be provided to more of the people. At the moment, uh, when I took office, uh, about 1.3 million households were eligible, but now it, this number had come up to 1.45 million households. And this will be expanded to 1.5 million households to 4.3 trillion won. Together with uh, such housing uh, policies, we are also going to take stock on the cultural infrastructure. Seoul, compared to other regions, the cultural infrastructure is better. However, this is not matching the scale of population and the status of the city. In particular, the cultural and arts facilities, uh, there is a gap and therefore we need to continuously check and review such infrastructure. To this end, the Mulle uh, Arts Center project and also the second Sejong Cultural Arts Center project would be supported in its policies so that it could go uh, as planned and even more swiftly. Moreover, areas where you can make culture and arts, we are going to add up these facilities. If there are deteriorating facilities, they, they will be uh, revamped, and the, uh, the, and the areas where those facilities are located will be, uh, will be bundled up into a cultural hub. And also, by establishing the Tanginli Cultural Creation Power Plant in Mapo and Hongdae areas, uh, this will be made into a youth complex arts center. And also, Seoul Station, Myeongdong, and Namsan area will be made into Seoul Station complex cultural space, embracing the old facilities, and also Namsan Performing Arts Creation Center will be established. Where we are today, the Bulle Arts Center, it used to be a steel uh, processing iron uh, smith complex. And I uh, remember uh, that I heard the grinding, grinding sound of iron when I was in my childhood around this area. But now it has been reborn into a cultural facility. And as such, the policies of the government could make these areas into a cultural hub. And for Seoul to be a very attractive city, we are going to do our utmost in our support.
Back in the days, the miracle on the Han River was a symbol of the achievement of economic development of the Korea of the Republic of Korea. And this second innovation on the Han River, urban innovation, will make Seoul a global leading city that would be going beyond the leading cities like New York and Paris. Together with the mayor. We will make Seoul as the city of innovation and the best city in the world. Uh, for the future of Seoul, I would like to thank everyone who are here today, the citizens and the artists. I look forward to your good and innovative ideas, and I ask for your support on the government policies. Thank you. Right, that was President Yoon Seok-yeol's opening address for the 21st policy briefing open to members of the public taking place here in capital Seoul as we speak, where he's called for efforts to ensure quality life throughout the capital city. Now, we'll have more on his remarks in our evening newscast. Findings for the month of February show an on-year decline in auto exports, but government officials remain optimistic as export value hit above 5 billion US dollars. Our correspondent Lee Soo-jin explains. South Korea's auto exports once again surpassed the 5 billion US dollar mark last month, but were unable to set new records. According to data released by the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy on Tuesday, the value of car exports came to $5.2 billion in February. This, however, is a 7.8% drop compared to the previous year. The ministry said this was mostly due to fewer working days as the Lunar New Year holiday was in February this year. The base effect was also a factor as outbound shipments of cars in February 2023 rose a whopping 47% on year to record what was at the time the highest ever monthly exports. The cumulative value of auto exports so far for the first two months of the year stands at $11.4 billion, up 7.5% on year. The cumulative domestic sales of cars, however, fell nearly 12% on year and more than 20% for the month of February. But the ministry remains optimistic as it expects production to resume a Hyundai Motors Ursan Asan plants as well as electric vehicle subsidies to boost domestic demand. Domestic production levels last month were down 13.6% on year from fewer working days and the temporary suspension of certain vehicle production plants. Still over 300,000 cars were produced for the 18th consecutive month. And on-year drops were also seen in exports and domestic sales of eco-friendly cars. In terms of units, slightly more than 50,000 vehicles were sold overseas, an almost 14% decrease compared to the previous year. The value of these exports came to around $1.7 billion, down 15% on-year. And domestic sales of eco-friendly cars were also down in February, falling nearly 12% from a year earlier to around 40,000 units. The Trade Ministry thus plans to work with other related ministries to make changes to current regulations that will boost investment in eco-friendly cars as well as overall vehicle exports. It will also allocate 442.5 billion won, around $330 million, to the auto R&D budget for this year to enhance the domestic auto industry's competitiveness in the global market. Lee Soo-jin, Arirang News. In other news, U.S. President Joe Biden has called on his Israeli counterpart to consider a sustainable combat strategy against Hamas, one that does not aggravate the dire humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Our Ian Jin reports. On Monday, U.S. President Joe Biden spoke with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, marking the first call between the two leaders in over a month amid rising tensions over the war in Gaza. The two leaders discussed their different perspectives on Israel's planned military operation in the city of Rafah. 
In a press briefing following the call, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan described the talks as a business-like meeting. Sullivan said President Biden emphasized that Rafah is a city where more than a million people have taken refuge, adding that a ground operation there would be a mistake. He said it would deepen the anarchy in Gaza and would result in the deaths of more innocent civilians and worsen the already dire humanitarian crisis. Biden also pushed for an alternative approach to be taken to target key Hamas elements in Rafah and secure the Egypt-Gaza border without a major ground invasion. The president told the prime minister again today that we share the goal of defeating Hamas, but we just believe you need a coherent and sustainable strategy to make that happen. But a major ground operation there would be a mistake. It would lead to more innocent civilian deaths, worsen the already dire humanitarian crisis, deepen the anarchy in Gaza, and further isolate Israel internationally. The call came on the same day as the release of a United Nations food security report, which said that about half of the population is suffering from catastrophic hunger and that the situation could deteriorate further. The UN-backed Integrated Food Security Phase Classification Report defines famine as when at least 20 percent of the population suffer from extreme food shortages, with one in three children acutely malnourished and two people out of every 10,000 dying daily from starvation or from malnutrition and disease. The report said after more than five months of war, which has not only destroyed territories but also cut off supplies, under a worst-case scenario, central and southern Gaza could face a risk of famine by July. Ian Jin, Arirang News. Good afternoon. Winter seems to be still in full swing in mountainous regions in Gangwon-do, with up to 20 centimeters of snow expected. Nearby areas will also see 1 to 8 centimeters of snowfall. So a preliminary snow advisory has been issued in the region. Jeju and most of the coastal regions could be under a strong wind advisory today. And there is more. East of Gangwon-do will see up to 30 millimeters of showers. The rest of the country will see on and off spotty rain through the evening. The capital area will see sprinkles, which will not be enough to need an umbrella. And the dry advisory in eastern parts of the country could be lifted with today's showers. Afternoon highs are 1 to 5 degrees, lower than yesterday. Seoul, Daejeon and Chuncheon see a high of 11 degrees Celsius this afternoon. It will stay chillier than normal through Friday morning with another event of rain in the forecast on Friday afternoon. Then the weekend will be a mild one. That's Korea for you and here's a look at the international weather conditions. Those are the headlines at this hour. Coming up right after this break is our daily panel session. Do stay with us.